Hi everyone. Uh, recently, uh, during an oral examination of a student, uh, he was asked about uh, the dynamic separation of bulk cargo and how it leads to the listing and eventual capsizing of bulk carrier vessels. So I thought I'll make this video on it because uh, you need to understand how solid bulk cargos behave uh, during ocean transportation, especially uh, you have to identify any cargo instability due to moisture. Uh, irrespective of whether you are sailing on bulk carriers or not. Uh, especially if you are not sailing on bulk carriers, it's important for you to understand the behavior and the properties of bulk carrier and how it can lead to listing and capsizing of vessels. So let's get started. Um, on your screen here, what you see is a, a bulk cargo. Uh, this has not yet separated. There is not yet any moisture here. So what uh, the bulk cargo is done normally before loading, the bulk cargo is subjected to something called a dynamic centrifuge test, which shows that some cargos do not liquefy in the classical sense. However, they do exhibit an instability due to moisture, whereby the cargo dynamically separates to form a drier, compact and competent solid bulk over which a slurry surface forms. Now let me show you uh, in the next screen here. So in the next screen here, you can see if the cargo is fine enough and wet enough and experiences enough force from uh, the vessel moving or the motion of the vessel, the dynamic motion of the vessel at sea, the cargo undergoes a dynamic separation. And what it does it is expels the water to the surface of the cargo as the cargo pile slumps. So the final worst case result is the formation of a dense free slurry surface covering the full width of the vessel hold. Now this free slurry surface has serious implications to a vessel's stability. Now to understand the vessel's response to dynamic separation of the cargo and to be able to accurately ascribe the mechanisms leading to catastrophic failure. Uh, now incidents where vessels has been lost due to cargo liquefaction where assessed needs to be studied. Now typically it is the account from any surviving crew of such vessels uh, that leads uh, to the understanding of the process which leads to understanding how the vessel list and capsizes. Now in most accounts the survivors say that the first sign there was an issue was when the crew noticed the vessel's unusual response typically its rolling behavior. Soon after this the vessel would develop a list that would progressively increase over a period of at least an hour, sometimes even days. And finally, at some point, when a list of 15 degrees or more is reached, the vessel capsizes in a matter of minutes. Now, these account point uh, to a two-stage process of failure. The first being the steady development of a list and the second being rapid capsizing. Now, any cargo instability due to moisture that arises should be able to explain the vessel's behavior. Under the classic liquefaction model, this is difficult to explain as the cargo liquefies its shifts during any rolling motion causing rapid capsizing. However, the dynamic separation phenomena with the formation of a free slurry effect can explain this two stage process leading to vessel loss. Now, if you are aware of this diagram that you see on your screen, you can see here that um, when we talk about free surface effect, now the free slurry surface affects the static stability of a vessel by effectively reducing the vessel's GM. You know what GM is, right? GM is the vertical distance between the vessel's meta center and the center of gravity. Now, this depends upon the density and the height of the slurry formed. The width the slurry can move in a hold and number of holes that form a free slurry surface. If one or more holes have a free slurry surface that covers the full beam of the ship's hold, then imagine the vessel's GM will be significantly reduced and an unstable state will result. Now, in this condition, the vessel may still be upright but its response to waves will be atypical and its normal rolling motions will have an overriding wobbling motion due to the free slurry surface. Now this is the first sign something is wrong and the crew and master will feel this behavior. As the vessel's GM approaches zero, the destabilizing effect of the free slurry surface will be counteracted by the vessel's writing moment. So you know what is writing moment? You can see that the lever that the center of gravity forms with the new uh, center of buoyancy, the vertical line through the center of buoyancy. So the, the horizontal line GZ, that is the writing moment and the capsizing, the writing moment. And uh, 
the writing moment what this does is it tries to um, bring the vessel back from the state of list however the amount of list developed depends on the slurry density the depth of the slurry the width of the slurry and the number of holes containing the free slurry effect or free slurry surface so the more the number of holes more will be this free surface effect and as the angle of list starts to increase the writing lever which is gz will sometimes be not enough to bring the vessel back to the upright condition it may put the vessel uh, at an angle of lol or beyond the angle of lol actually um, it will capsize so you can see here how the uh, as the list is increasing from theta 1 to theta 2 uh, as you go from left to right you can see how the writing lever increases trying to bring the vessel back to the upright position but sometimes it's not possible with large angle of hills which will develop if more number of holes have this free slurry now once listed the vessel will still experience some kind of rolling motions and the free slurry surface can erode the underlying competent solid cargo causing it to be deposited to the lower side of the cargo hold that you can see here on your screen right so this increases the list it makes it more furthermore the exposed competent solid cargo that is on the high side can be under eroded now at this point the high side cargo can easily avalanche as its angle of repose has been exceeded by the erosion action of the free slurry surface causing a catastrophic cargo shift which results in the vessel quickly capsizing so you can see here i have shown it to you in stages right from when the vessel was upright to when the free slurry surface started to form on the cargo so you can see the blue is the free slurry surface the orange is of course the cargo but you can see how the cargo also starts to like an avalanche like a landslide it starts to go on one side of the cargo hold and if there are more cargo holds like these then the ship will definitely not only list it will be very difficult to control that list it will be difficult for the writing lever to bring the vessel back to the upright condition and uh, the vessel may not only be list listed but also it will capsize so of course uh, under the traditional cargo liquefaction model only by ensuring compliance before the cargo is loaded can any risk due to cargo liquefaction be mitigated so all the testing and the dynamic separation test should be carried out ashore it's normally carried out ashore so if a cargo is misdeclared and the vessel sails the master and crew have no advice or potential recourse and the cargo may liquefy causing the cargo to rapidly shift and vessel to capsize so therefore it's very important that these tests are carried out and the master asks for certificate the transportable moisture limit uh, and the certification that is required with carrying of bulk cargo because if the cargo is misdeclared or incorrectly declared and the vessel sails the master and crew are educated about the potential signs of cargo dynamic separation and its influence on the vessel's behavior so at the first sign of unusual vessel rolling motions the crew will know something is wrong with the cargo stability and then they can act to firstly reduce the vessel's motion and input forces to the cargo to prevent further cargo separation the crew can get ready to abandon ship if required or seek refuge if possible or could start with measures to increase the vessel's gm and regain the positive stability to prevent a list from developing all right so this question was asked in the oral exam recently uh, i will tell you the other questions which were asked as well i will make a video on it tomorrow and put it up on this channel and you can watch it and uh, the, go through the questions that have been asked recently of a student uh, and i thought i'll take up this topic first and then as i discuss the questions i look forward to your feedback on which are the other topics you want me to take care of all right so i get a lot of requests in one day and a lot of requests are coming in from all over the world it's very hard for me to uh, make videos on every topic i try my best to do it because i have to study as well i have to learn i have to research i have to make i have to get, gather data and pictures and try to make it easy for you to understand so uh, be patient and i'll try to address each and every doubt Thank you for watching guys thank you for supporting the channel appreciate it and good luck with your studies all the best uh, may you prosper in your career and see you soon with my next video bye for now